Okay, so I clicked it. I click go live. Does it did it automatically put us in the live show or? We are live. We hey, we are live. Uh, welcome to Rob Wright's Gen X Pop Culture. I'm Rob Wright, your host, and today we are talking about the hit songs, the top forty hit songs of 1982, and I have hey. several guests with me that I'd like to introduce. Uh, let's. Just kind of starting over to my right is the amazing Tony Stark. Tony, how are you? Living the dream, dreaming to live. There's a sun out there today. Uh, I'm usually not aware of a star being so close to our planet uh, as I usually sleep these hours away. But I'm um, happy to be here. Happy to help you with your first live stream. Uh, so bust out the leg warmers, hop in that arcade, and go McFly. And get ready to talk some 80s. Yeah. It's fine for today. Absolutely. And then I've got Agent Pepsi One. How are you? Hey, everybody. I'm doing well, doing well. Wonderful Saturday. And just let you all know, 1982 is my favorite year in music. So I'm really pleased to be here. And, and How also, come? Oh, it's just, it is the amazing year of the, is the second British invasion. Yeah. It is, in fact, I would tell you, a lot of the year that defined the early 80s musically. Right, because there was a lot of uh, bands like Sting or like uh, the Police and the um, bands like that that were coming out and getting big in the United States as well in that time, and it's starting to happen again, and that's why I promote. Um, Ren so much is because now we've got a man that is completely um, everybody loves him. He's a jack of all trades. He is. And he, he is too, just so cute and so <laughs> amazing at what he does. And, and like even just the tales of Jenny and Scrooge. The <laughs> second one a uh, uh, Sc Screech's tale um, when he's just sitting on the steps and he starts just playing the guitar and then he gets into it I think that is so amazing and then also in in Violet's tale so <clears throat> and we need to expose these men to, <laughs> to that because and I know Robert Wright follows uh, like always likes my Ren stuff, but I don't know if he actually watches. It. <laughs> I haven't had a chance to watch much of it, Mary, but I will check it out. And oh, this is the Ginger Minish, Mary Ashmead. Welcome, glad you're here. Thank you. He has been, you guys, so good, and the whole community of of um, people that are reacting to him. He's huge, you guys. He is huge. And um, so I've heard him called obscure in the United States. Well, guess what? It's called talent. He knows how to do everything. That's cool. That's cool. But yeah. let's let's turn our focus to these wonderful hits in 1982. Oh, yeah, for sure. So, folks, we got a great show for you today. What we're going to do is we're going to take them 10 at a time. So 40 through 31, 30 through 21, 20 through 11, and then the top 10. And then what we'll do is we'll maybe mix in a few uh, hits that we know of from uh, the 1982 that didn't quite make the Billboard Top 40. Right, uh, right, right. Honorable mention of yeah. these songs. So uh, I know. let me share a slide real quick, and we'll, we'll start with the, the first set of 10 here. Hail to everybody in the chat. So far, we got uh, hey, Matt Jean, uh, Keevan Six, Eric Freeze. Good to see you. Are oh, you not related to Victor Freeze? Are you? Uh, Janie Stubblefield and uh, and uh, that's it. I think me thinks could be blind. But there oh, we are. you're not blind, Tony. Tony. And Agent well, Pepsi well, one um, NF two is one that I like. Just thank you. throwing that out there. <laughs> Anyways, 
let's All right. move along. So let's 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 look at our, our first set of 10 here. So you have at number 40, Heat of the Moment by Asia, 65 Love Affair by Paul Davis. Ooh. I've never been to me by Charlene. Mm -hmm. Even the nights are better by Air Supply. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, Leader and Lace by Stevie Nicks and Don Henley. Got an interesting story about that song. Leader of the Band by Dan Fogelberg. Open Arms, uh, great journey song. Uh, yeah. Let's Groove by Earth, Wind, and Fire. Eye in the Sky by the Alan Parsons Project. And <laughs> Hold Me, Hold Me by Fleetwood Mac. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is there. difficult. Heat oh, of the moment. Yeah. Yep. Heat so, of the moment. Yeah. Out of these ten, what what stands out? Is there one that stands out to you? What's one of your favorite ones out of these ten? Um, for me, it's Heat of the Moment by Asia. It is absolutely amazing. Uh, yeah. I mean, it is. I mean, you know, you know, I don't know if you know this, but Asia, if you think about it, was the first of these so-called super groups. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. I mean, it was just the talent, the energy. In fact, there. I mean, it, it is the it is the it is the uh, defining track off their first CD, or in, that, mm -hmm. in this case, I should say album. I mean, it is just I don't know why it's forty. It should be like number like three or four. So, I mean, that is amazing. And you know, Alan Parsons Project, I love too. But the journey, I mean, I'm not. That's what I was gonna say. The Alan Parsons Project. I don't know. I'm impartial to open arms, but then again, uh, I like anything Steve Perry does. I love that. Uh, yeah, but I know. <laughs> what came after that in 1980 was it 83? I like anything too. Much better than than this one. Yeah, now, I have a funny story. I mean, I love Journey, but I I listened to too much Journey. <laughs> like, <laughs> bro, no. Yeah, they did like the hog up the stereo, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah they, they, they certainly did. I think Escape had uh, four or five hits on its own. Uh, mm -hmm. Escape is probably my favorite album by Journey, and Open Arms is actually one of my favorite songs. I Such love a beautiful Open Arms. And tape, I, and I, played that yeah. thing all I have a funny story about Journey. So Go for it. I had a, I had a 2600 Atari. I had a Woody uh, back mm -hmm. in the day. I was uh, given yeah. to me by my papi. Well, even wasn't my real dad, who's my father figure, though. Yeah. And one of those, one of those uh, cartridges was Escape, and it had that that album art on it. And at the time, I didn't know who Journey was because I was just a wee lad. I didn't know that was a band. Yeah. And I just thought it was some ship coming out of a planet. And I'm like, I oh, know. this is gonna be sci-fi cool. space epic on on my Atari. I'm gonna I play them. And I was like, what is this? But, you know, it was very, very poorly rendered uh, music, obviously, because it was an Atari. So, you know, it's not going to be able to, like, hit those high synth notes that they're known for. But, uh, yeah, at first, my first exposure to Journey wasn't music at all. It was uh, through uh, video games, uh, through Escape, wow. uh, the Atari for the Atari. And uh, I was just like, what is this? It was kind of confusing, but I had fun. That's and, crazy. I didn't know they did that yeah. with the Atari. Yeah, uh, well, well, you know, the Atari was the first like portable gaming system that was actually right. successful getting out there. I know. You did have yeah. Pong and stuff, but that was still a very niche uh, thing. It was very uh, right. you know, fringe, fringe technology you, and expensive, and you know, so it was you like you know how much I was into Atari, and yeah. like. You know, we were talking about it the other day and stuff. So I, I wasn't aware that you could even do that on Atari. Maybe my brother was, but not me. But anyways, I like, uh, you know, and if you could play anything on something like that, which you can, um, what is it, PS2, you can play um, CDs and stuff on there. And mm -hmm. uh, so I think it's really cool that they it's a, a dual, you know, um, system. Yeah. A system. Yeah. I think it's awesome. Yeah. You mentioned Asia. Asia is a very underrated band. I, I think they deserve a lot more credit than they yeah. got. I love I it. Agree. Uh, I agree. I agree. A bunch of, bunch of hits. Um, he had uh, 
in the seventies, he had a hit called I go crazy. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, in, in 1982, earlier in 1982 was down on the list. Uh, he had cool night. And then this song 55 love affair is probably my favorite song by him. It was originally yeah. going to be, uh, it's 65 love affair, but originally it was going to be 55 love affair. And his producer told him, Hey, you weren't, you weren't a teenager in 55. You might want to change it to 65. Uh, so if you listen to the lyrics, it almost sounds like music from the 50s, but it still would have worked in the 60s. So that's a great yeah. one. Um, Air Supply, Even the Nights Are Better is a great song. I don't know if it's their the best song, but they... Yeah, that's a great song. Air Supply, I've got the hits, and that's just an amazing album. Uh, I love that song. It's the early 80s. I absolutely love that song. Yeah. Uh, Leather and Lace, Stevie Nicks, and Don Henley. Did you guys know that they were they were a couple back in the the seventies? Yes, were. they did. I yes, that. yeah, they were. I did. They were a couple, and apparently, now this, I can't confirm this, but apparently, Don Henley thinks this, and I, I'm not sure from Stevie Nicks, but um, she did have an abortion when they were together, and apparently, the song Sarah is about that aborted baby. Uh, I'm not sure if that's completely true, that's something that I think Don Henley had alluded to. Uh, and I think Stevie Nicks had alluded to, but I'd heard that story. I don't know if it's hundred percent true, I I want to it up, but it's interesting. I didn't know that. Uh, but leather and lace is a good song. Uh, I don't know if you've ever heard that uh, tune, but um, it's really good. Uh, Dan Fogelberg is an underrated artist in my oh, opinion. I know it. I was mm -hmm. going to say that. Yeah. I mean, so underrated. Yeah. The uh, leader of the band is probably one of his best songs, and it's really about his father, and it's just yes. a beautiful song. I love that one, and the one they play around Christmas, same old Lang Syne. It's a very sad Christmas song, but it's a beautiful mm -hmm. one. Yeah, he does a really good job. Um, and I, my, I've always loved Dan Fogelberg. My, my parents, um, had their albums uh, and I'm talking like record records, mm -hmm. you know, and they, they have like, just like this huge, um, <laughs> you know, like, uh, like a ton of them. And so I always go and look and see wh what songs and what albums and what, you know, what they have and uh, Dan Fogelberg is one of them. So, and I remember listening to it growing up. So, <laughs> yeah, I listened to that song growing up. And then my mom, Earth, Wind, and Fire. Yeah. On here. And my mom had a couple of Earth, Wind, and Fire albums that were just Seven fantastic. Months. I mean, yeah. Great group they were. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I know. I know. Um, so did my parents and so did my husband look my husband loves earth wind and fire so uh matt g says madonna's first single came out in 1982 i thought lucky star came out in 83. yeah uh, i mean so did i yeah, yeah wow i didn't know that but madonna really hit her stride like 84 85 yeah. I think. um yeah with material girl and stuff oh yeah yeah. I mean, 1982 was also the birth of MTV, and it's one of the big things that I remember back then because most of these songs that we're talking about, I remember the video. That's the first thing I remember is the video. Right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I need to actually update my parody song, New Audience Girl, uh, with uh, the Star Wars game that recently came out. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. to the tune of Material Girl. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome that this is a new audience world and she is a new audience girl hey hey yeah there you go <laughs> <laughs> oh it's awesome oh, of MTV, I, I actually met uh martha quinn one time really yeah when cool. i was I, while i was in college i was waitressing down at the hard rock uh hard rock casino in biloxi and mm -hmm. she was there i guess with her husband anyway but you know she I'm going, oh my God, it's Martha Quinn because you know somebody that loves that era in music. Yeah. <laughs> Guess who watches all this stuff on YouTube? The, you know, the first hours <laughs> of MTV. I've seen it all. So, yeah. Oh, that's funny. 
That's awesome. And then oh, Alan Parsons yeah. Project, Eye in the Sky. Uh, everybody probably knows uh, the song before it that's usually mixed with it, Sirius. Right. And Sirius is actually uh, the Chicago Bulls in the Michael Jordan era. They used to open up yeah. Sirius slash Eye in the Sky. Mm -hmm. And that is a fantastic instrumental to Eye in the Sky. And it's a great intro. Uh, one of the things growing up that we learned is that you want to listen to the whole album to really understand what the artist is trying to do with their music rather than exactly. just with the singles. And you that's where you hear some of these one hit wonders. You hear some of the uh, deep cover mm -hmm. tracks that are really good. And sometimes when they play these live, they'll play the album track along with the popular hit and you learn about it uh, that way too. So it's really cool. That's one thing I like about the 80s in particular. Mm -hmm. is they mastered the one hit wonder. You, know, you could get an yeah. entire album. You would oh, buy an yeah. entire album just to for the one hit wonder. And play the wonder. same song. Yeah. Rewind, play the same song. That poor cassette tape's going, please, I have more, I promise. You know, like, yeah, rewind, I mean, play the same song. I could, I know, <laughs> but I couldn't get into the rest of the the um, <clears throat> album you know what i mean like mm -hmm. <laughs> i'd only get into the one hit wonder but you know i i have a, I have, a I have a trivia fact about that alan parsons song yeah um, sure go ahead um did you know that the band alan parsons project sent uh, the u.s government a cease and desist order because the nro was using it as their unofficial theme song i guess you could oh, say, yeah, really? Because, yeah, because this was the time, you know, they had all the, you know, the, the first of the keyhole spy satellites mm -hmm. and, they yeah. were, and they were playing Eye, of the, Eye in the Sky. So, <laughs> um, oh, my God. This order and, the, and basically, um, Talk about copyright. The, the Reagan administration bought off uh, Alan Parsons project. They owned the rights to Eye in the Sky for a little bit so they could use it. That's awesome. Alan oh, okay. also okay, was Nancy. We're going to have to make sure, Nancy. Uh, we're going to have to buy that song, Nancy. We're going to have to take care of it. <laughs> Good job, Tony. I love it. I love it. Uh, yeah, Alan Parsons is also a big producer. He produced some of Pink Floyd's albums. Yes, he yeah, did. Dark Side of the Moon, for example. Mm -hmm. Yep. Absolutely. Which that album is phenomenal. Go listen to it cover to cover. Uh, oh, I know. My mom lives in Austin, and uh, when we were younger, my brother and I went down there, and we were uh, staying with her over the holidays, and uh, we were up living through the TV, and we, we found a local Austin access station, and Wizards of Oz came on, and all of a sudden, it was Pink Floyd, and we were like, what on earth is this? What? It started doing <laughs> yeah. what's known as Dark Side of Oz. So apparently, oh. when you, um, the second lion roar is when you're supposed to start the Pink Floyd album, Dark Side of the Moon. And so several tracks and lyrics in Dark Side of the Moon line up with Wizard of Oz the movie. Like when she first sees the witch, uh, when she uh, lands in Oz and it turns to color, all kinds of cool, crazy things. So if you get, ever get a chance to do that, uh, I recommend yeah. it. <laughs> so I'll have to give that I'm going to do it now. <laughs> 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 I had no idea. Holy cow! Hell yes, I'm going to, uh, to do that. Catalog this historical document, Nancy. <laughs> I know. Yeah, this is cool. Yeah. And, uh, Hold me from Fleetwood Mac. Uh, Fleetwood Mac's a great group, and that song. I know. Great. My favorite song is "Dreams." So, or is that what it's called? Dreams. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's my favorite song from Fleetwood Mac, and. Um, um McFleetwood and um and Stevie Nicks used to be a thing, you know, back in the Lindsay day. Lindsay Buckingham and Stevie Nicks were a thing for a long time first. And then yeah. Mick Fleetwood went out with her. Uh she dated Don Henley, Mick Fleetwood. At one point I think she dated Don uh, or Tom Petty. Yeah. And a few others. So Yeah. You know, Mick Fleetwood is it's like it's like freakishly tall. He's like six yes, eight. he is. He is freaking oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. He's like six eight. Yeah. I'm a big old country boy, but he's taller than me. 
<laughs> long. His legs are long and skinny, and like he was always like had his hair in that um, like man bun on his on top of his head, and um, you know would wear like um, really cool you know outfits and stuff. But he he was super tall, and everybody else would be sitting down because. He was so tall, and he would be, like, um, kind of halfway on a, a seating position, you know, just because it, it they didn't want to make everybody else look so short in mm -hmm. comparison to Mick Fleetwood. So. Yeah. And by comparison, uh, Stevie Nicks is a short person as well. She's yeah. barely five yeah. foot. Yeah, She's that's what I was going to say. Is she like five foot one or five foot two? Oh my God, I didn't know she was that short. Yeah, she's yeah, very, she's... very short. Mm -hmm. But she has a gorgeous voice. The person in that band that I don't think gets enough credit uh, who recently passed away was Christine McVie. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, I love her voice. She has a gorgeous voice. I, I love Christine. all of her songs from Fleetwood Mac, including this I one, know. are just beautiful. I mean, so amazing. Um, they, I, they were so talented. I mean, you had three different singers that could really sing. Uh, All of them. I know. I mean, uh, one of the best bands ever. Yep. I think so too. And, um, you know, when I, like, like I was saying, this is all like my parents' music, but, um, I'm still old enough that it's my music too. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because um, I'm kind of in that in between. I am I'm Generation um, X, and so um, you know, of course, that's going to be part of my my um, music. You know, it, when um, I was learning it along the way. So, you know, Fleetwood Mac was one of my favorites favorite favorite uh bands of of all time so yeah they're one of mine too i i, I adore fleetwood mac i mean yeah I just you know i the dreams album and then this the album dreams. Too, yeah. i mean tusk uh just so many they're great yeah with the usc yeah. band yep mm -hmm. So. I loved it whenever they used that song in the the Kevin Smith movie the, of the same name. <laughs> <laughs> the evils of the world and the uh, sins of man weigh a uh, heavy a burden. It is best to be a walrus, and he's just like, please God, stop. <laughs> <laughs> Any more from this this set of ten that you guys want to talk about? Um, are we going to choose a song to play? Like, do we need like a teeny tiny little, um, <laughs> um, I know how they do it with reaction videos. They have, uh, like, I, I would offer to sing a couple, but my tiny. voice is, yeah. is demolished from the work I put in last night. Okay. I, so I feel like we'll I just, I feel like I would botch it right now, you know. Yeah, no, you don't have to sing it. Jeez, I I'm just looking um, at at the um, Rob Wright part of it, what he plans on doing with this. Um, are you going to do like reactions or just show? Uh, videos or just talk about music like i was going to talk about music i i just didn't want to risk violating copyright law by, yeah, by the showing last thing i want to do exactly. is uh, right yeah. and i understand it that it's um, not earn the I ire need, of the youtube gods sure and i i need to find out how you do the reaction videos without them doing that because it has to be a certain the screen uh, for the video has to be tiny has to be just little 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 so and i just didn't know how if you knew how to do that or if anybody knew how to do that 
And um, if not, then I will find it somewhere else. So, yeah, um, we need to find out how to do that. That'd be a cool thing to do. But, yeah. you know, even if we'll you play talk, part of the music, yeah. sometimes you can get copyright strikes. So, yeah. Yeah. You know what? It sucks. Uh, there's so much. Like, I um, put up a guy named Black Pegasus, and he is a really good uh, reactor. And, um, and I like the way he, that he reacts because he stops it, talks about it, and then moves on. But mm -hmm. um, what what I was saying was that um, he has um, he has his actually rather larger than most people I've seen him uh, do reaction videos and. Um, One, two, three, four. Uh, uh, is everybody roboting over here? Is Buffering issues could just be me. Hold on. Um, uh oh. I, I don't see anything. I, I don't. Yeah, I have no idea. I don't see anything at all. I don't see anything buffering. Okay, no. then that's from my end. If it continues, I'll refresh and be right back. So. Cool. Okay. All right. So let's let's have let's have one or two questions before we go to the next the next ten. So, which of these songs do you think you'd like most likely hear in a grocery store? The Journey. Yeah. Yeah, probably Journey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Again, I think I've heard "Hold Me" in, in a grocery store once yeah. as well. So, yeah, probably Journey. So, you gotta remember um, they hog the stereo. <laughs> yep. Yeah. yeah, they're probably the most overplayed one of these ten as well. So, um, and then final question of these ten. Which one of these would we see you jamming in the car to? Come on, you know, you all do it. Heat of the moment. Heat of the moment. Jamming in the car to. <laughs> no, not Journey. No, no, no. Uh, uh, I, Alan I need the list. I need the list again. Where do I see it? <laughs> too bad. Too late. Dur, dur, dur. Oh, the wow. list again. So we have Heat of the Moment, 65 Love Affair. No. Mm -hmm. Which I, I'd be jamming to that one too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Never been to me. Even the nights are better. No. Leather and lace. No. Leader of the band. <laughs> no. Open arms. I would be. Let's groove. Yeah. I the sky maybe. Uh, and then hold me by Fleetwood Mac. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. I think I, I would be probably hold me from Fleetwood mm -hmm. Mac. Good to yep. see a Canadian Spider-Man in the chat. He is mentioning an honorable mention with Bruce Springsteen's uh, Nebraska. Oh, beautiful song. Beautiful song. Mm -hmm. Love the boss. He he yeah. ruled the early 80s. Oh, my goodness. I know. <laughs> yeah, when you get to 84 and his Born in the USA album with all those hits. So. Yeah. You know, I know. And, and, like, a lot of people love him. And I know that there he's always been, like, a part of, um, you know, of everybody's, like, everybody loves him. And, you know, he's always been a part of, like, the, like USA kind of music, you know. He, he always talking about United States of America. And, and um, I like him for that. But. I just never really got into him. Yeah, me neither. Yeah, he was he was a choir taste, but the two songs that I'll mention by him really quick, uh, Dancing in the Dark, the video. Uh, the girl that gets put up pulled up on stage is Courtney Cox. Yep, I know that. Well, and then actually Born in the USA is not a very patriotic song if you actually listen to the lyrics. It's yeah, it's anti. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's move on to our next 10 in the, the top 40 countdown. Okay. Uh, some familiar ones here. Uh, so who could it be now by Minute Work? Great song. Awesome. 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 I know. Oh, I love love oh we, we love, love some Minute Work. Yep. Only the Lonely by the Motels. I don't oh, know if you guys know that one. Yeah. Only the Lonely can play. Mm -hmm. yep. Beautiful. Yep. yep. And then we got another air supply hit, Sweet Dreams. Um, yeah. Then George Benson, turn your love around. No. Oh, I love that song. <laughs> Junior with the other woman. 
Uh, then we got a great 80s girl band, the Go Go's, with We Got the Beat, which is probably my favorite we song got by the now. Beat. We got the beat. We got the beat. We got the beat. Yeah, we got the beat. Mm. Yep. Then Dawes Band with Let It Whip, which is a song I'm not as familiar with. Uh, then we have The Cars, which is an amazing band. I love The Cars. They've got I love The Cars. Shake It Up. Yeah. Shake It Up. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to vote for Shake It Up. Oh, yeah. I'm torn. Yeah. I'm torn between Shake It Up and Only the Lonely. Only the Lonely has a special place in my heart. Mm -hmm. We got two more. We've got the redheaded stranger himself, Texas' own Willie Nelson with Always on My Mind. Yeah, mm -hmm. but that's not a rock and roll song, though. True, but that's it was still really about top 40. Still, yeah, top. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. The immortal Willie Nelson, oh, one day mm -hmm. I shall puff, puff pass with you. <laughs> so silly. And then rounding out the 30 through 21 is the sweetest thing I've ever known by Juice Newton, uh, which she's she's got some really good songs. Queen of Hearts is probably my favorite by her. That's a beautiful song. Yes. Yeah. So what are those 10 do you, do you guys like? Only the Lonely and uh, Shake It Up. Shake It Up. Yeah. For, for me, it's Men at Work. Um, who can it be now? I love that Australian band. Oh, I do. No I love thing. that. Who can it be now? Yeah. Yeah. Who can it be yeah. now? But I'm still sticking with my my original. So, Men at Work. Yeah, Men at Work is great. I, I love who, who Can It Be Now. Uh, great song. Yes. Right? They had a lot of good hits in the 80s. Uh, Lamb Down Under. Oh, God, you know. yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, Land Down Under, that's another stereo hogger. Oh, big yeah. time. I the love it. The obsession Land with Under, Australia yeah. that happened for those, like, you know, 18 months. Yeah. You know, the, uh, the, 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 like, yeah, this is a tucker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Stark. We, we got to learn about Only the Lonely. Why is it so special uh, for you? Uh, it was a love song for one of my ex girlfriends. Which one is it? I can't see. Sorry, I'm I like, blind. I like to share, I like to share my music with uh, the people that I care about in that regard. Yeah, I, I remember gonna, once I'm back. Saying, you know, I was ten years late in making the mixtapes, but I used to make some good mixtapes. <laughs> I used uh, to, make, yeah. <laughs> my brother made mixtapes for me because. I liked their music, my brother's music. I have two brothers, sorry. And they're older than me, so they, I always, like, liked their music, you know, and I followed them. Um, I wasn't really into what my sisters were into. I have an older sister, and she was, like, listening to country, and I do, I'm not humongous country fan so mm -hmm. um you know i i was always listening to what my brothers were listening to which is rock he and heavy metal so um that that to me is like you know music and not <laughs> i listen when it comes to heavy metal i want to yeah. get the project going with Fat for hire because you know he's big metalhead. I yeah. have so many concert stories, so many stories. Met oh, so you don't people. even know. I know. Like, really? like, like I want, I want to get this off the ground. Uh, one of the first podcasts that I was ever a part of, way before I was a YouTuber, this is back when Google Hangouts were a thing, was called the Decepticast, and then we did this sideshow called Hangar Eighteen. Yeah. We all, we basically did all of these. All of us was basically a seeker in the hangar. We were all Decepticons. We were all jets. And so, you know, we were, we were, you know I was a uh, hot link. Uh, it was, the person behind it was uh, was Thundercracker. And uh, we had uh -huh. a little bit. So it was just real fun. But we would just talk about metal. And, yeah. And, you know, like good metal. Yeah. I miss that. So we need to do that I for know. your show. We need to 
talk heavy metal one day. That would be real fun. Oh yeah. I was yeah. a metal head, but I, I had friends that then listened to a lot of it. So I, I got exposed to a lot of it, like uh, particularly mm -hmm. Metallica, Guns N' Roses, and then everything that was played in the top 40. Uh, a lot of good stuff there. And, you know, they did some crossover uh, ballads as well on some of those uh, metal albums too. So uh, great stuff. Uh, but rounding out some of this, uh, you know, Air Supply had another song, Sweet Dreams, which I, I don't know. It's one of my favorites. It's okay, but Air Supply, yeah. and you know, this is two hits on the top 40. That's pretty awesome. Um, Turn Your Love Around is just such a catchy song. Yeah. Is that that one? That's that's catchy. Yeah. And then yeah. we briefly oh. talked about the Go-Go's. We got the beat. I mean, the yeah. Go-Go, my goodness. That one's good. They just came into their own and came on onto the, the scene really fast. And unfortunately split up, I think, a little bit too soon because I, I thought they were a great band. Yeah. And they I were the Spice Girls before the Spice Girls. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they were amazing. I, I love Belinda Carlisle. Even her solo stuff is, is fantastic, too. I liked Belinda Carlisle as well. Yeah, but and I I'm not really like um I don't know for some reason I've never been a female artist follower. Uh, I don't I don't know why, but I and I do like a lot of um like Stevie Nicks, of course. Everybody loves Stevie Nicks. I was about to say like you never listen to Heart. I, I like her, yeah. yeah. But you know what? That that was the eighties, though. You got to remember, Tony. It's completely different now, and the women now that are into um, the top one hundred these days are um, artists, but they're not musicians. If you get well, what I, I'm that, I, I was talking about hard. I wasn't talking about, you know. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying is I mm -hmm. love back then, but I don't like right now. Mm -hmm. So I loved back then when all the good female musicians knew how to actually play um, their instruments very well. You know. We got some... Uh comments in the chat here Canadian Spider-Man is goes on to talk about Atlantic City, Johnny 99, State Trooper, all from Nebraska yes sir. Oh, Ray cool. Lazard says Heat of the Moment album cover by fantasy oh, yes. artist Roger Dean. That's an and amazing then, And then Matt G references the number of the beast if you'll, if you'll, if, if you'll indulge me I'll do the intro for that <clears throat> Woe to you O earth and sea for the devil sends the beast with wrath, because he knows the time is short. Let him who hath understanding reckon the number of the beast, for it is a human number. Its <laughs> number is 666. Iron Maiden. Iron Maiden was an interesting band. I love that band. <laughs> they had some interesting videos. I, I'll yeah. tell you, I mean, they had some very interesting videos. Uh, then we get to the Cars, Shake It Up, which you guys already mentioned. Love mm -hmm. that song. That's a great album, but my favorite album by them is Heartbeat City. Oh, yeah. Heartbeat yes, City. With the, shake It Up. Shake It Up from the Cars. Mm -hmm. Shake It Up. Be -do 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 -do. Early uh, synths. Early synth synthesizers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Cars were one of the bands that really revolutionized synth and, and different types of uh, music. When they did Heartbeat City, they really got into the digital stuff, and it they really digitized that album. Mm -hmm. That album was the, one of the first to use a lot of digital effects in the music, but that didn't get released till 1984. So mm -hmm. anyway, so this is this type top. Top uh, uh, this set of ten. I, I think the the, the uh, forty through thirty one is a little bit better than this one, but there's mm -hmm. still some great songs in here. Uh, so, any <laughs> of these songs you, you mentioned, "Shake It Up" is probably your favorite, or "Land Down Under," or no, 
Uh, Not laying down. Who, who can Never it be now? Or shake it up. I would agree. Land down under is great too with the Vegemite sandwich. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Oh god, that stuff is so nasty. <laughs> have you I had a Vegemite sandwich? I have no idea what it is. Vegemite, Vegemite is nasty. It's, it's like a rhubarb spread, isn't it? Yeah. It, it, it's it, it's <laughs> yeah. it's it's fermented. It's fermented. <laughs> Nasty, it's just nasty. Don't tell me why they like to eat that stuff down under, but hey, uh, you do you. <laughs> yeah, no idea. They're just tough. Uh oh, we lost Mary. She'll be back. You want to okay. know why Foster's is such a successful beer company? Because you got to drink something after choking down that Vegemite. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. I'll have to remember that one. Okay. Let's move on to our next 10 because I, I, I think this, this group of 10 is not as not as strong as the last one. But not, let's move not at all. Yeah, let's move to this. Uh, we're approaching the top 20 here. Uh, so we got... Don't Talk to Strangers by Rick Springfield. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. The awesome Foreigner song, Waiting for a Girl Like You, uh, which on yeah, Duke yeah, Stream we, we had Clinton do a whole bunch, which is hilarious. Um, Melissa Manchester, I love this song. You should hear how she talks about you. Do you guys know that one? Mm -hmm. Key Largo by... Uh, Bertie Higgins, which is a good song. Uh, then my favorite one by Tommy Two Tone. Eight six seven five three zero nine. That's mm -hmm. iconic. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> Love that. Daddy, I got your I number. I need to make you mine. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's why I always reference. Uh, so we're on Doomcock's live streams on Friday Night Frolics. He sings a song called uh, Whiskey in the Jar. And uh -huh. they always mention Jenny. So it's Jenny 8675309. More specifically, DC does the uh, Dubliners original Whiskey in the Jar. Because mm -hmm. uh, there are variances of that song. Uh, just like, uh, like I prefer the Cab Calloway version of uh, St. James Infirmary. But he sings the uh, Elvis version. I think. And uh, so. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I like Cab Calloway's version. It's a little different. Fascinating. I didn't know, you know, you music changes. Different artists do the same mm -hmm. song or the same nice. stuff. And it's interesting how it, different interpretations. Yeah. Then we get in the, 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 the top 15 here. Uh, Hall and Oates makes their first appearance on here. I can't go for that. No can do. Classic right. song. Very good uh, song. One of my personal favorites, Rosanna by Toto. Yes, I like what you do for me, Rosanna. Rosanna. Could you yeah. move your head a little lower, please, Rosanna? <laughs> oh, come on now. <laughs> That's not the lyrics. <laughs> uh, then <laughs> I wonder, Quarter Flash with Harden My Heart. God, that's that's beautiful, especially that saxophone opening. Oh yeah! Oh my goodness, that, the saxophone on that song wails. Um, mm -hmm. but, and we have the Mangles' "Chariots of Fire," and we no, round out through eleven with "Soft Cell," "Tainted Love." Yeah. Da -da, da -da. You know, um. Yeah. Da -da -da. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. What mm. stands out to you? Go ahead, Agent Pipsy One. Yeah, I mean, I, I am I am so happy to see that Ber uh, Bertie Higgins up here, but it's not Key Largo. That is not that. I, in fact, I have the CD. Um, mm -hmm. It is not. It is not Key Largo. It is the Tropics, which is the best song on that album by far. It is simply amazing. It's a story about this guy that's trying to make a deal, and he tried to go down the the straight and narrow path, and then he got off track and he became like a booze smuggler. It's amazing. 
Really? I'll have to take a listen to that. Yeah. Key Largo mm-hmm. is just, it's just, it's just mush. But the tropics are amazing. And, and you know, he's still around. He's still with us. Uh, I think he's in his mid 80s now. Mm-hmm. But um, of all these you have up here, it's, is, um, yeah, I mean, I mean, if you had the tropics up here, not this weird song, but um, Quarter Flash is amazing, is absolutely amazing. Never been a Hall and Oates fan, never. Um, Foreigner. Really? Yeah, but I mean, Rosanna, you know, I always thought Rosanna in Africa came off the same, wasn't that, wasn't that Toto 4? Yep, I had the tape. So I'll, I'll go ahead, since you mentioned it, I'll go ahead and tell the story. So um, change the outlook real quick so people can see me. I mean, man. I had, I had the Toto 4 tape, and the first song on side one is Rosanna, which mm-hmm. do you know who Rosanna's about? Rosanna Arquette. She was dating the drummer at the time. Uh, and so, oh, really? I didn't know yeah. that. Mm-hmm. So uh, there's also another big hit song for uh, for another artist that's about Rosanna Arquette. Do you guys know who I might be talking about in the song? I'll give you a hint. Think holding a boombox over your head in a movie with John Cusack. Uh. I, remember, I, remember, I remember that movie. I remember. Oh, God. It's where he had these weird gloves. They were, mm-hmm. He was driving the station wagon, and he had these weird gloves where he cut the fingers off because he couldn't afford driving gloves. God, I can't remember the name of this movie, though. Baby, come back. No, you not quite. It all on me. That's that's Lover Boy. No, it's yeah. uh, Say Anything, and the song is In Your Eyes by Peter Gabriel, uh, who is actually married to Roseanne Arquette for a time. Say Anything. Ray Lucard's on the ball, too. Yep. He's on so. The ball. Those are two songs about Rosanna Arquette, Rosanna and uh, In Your Eyes. So, and the Toto album, Toto 4, I had the tape of, Rosanna was the first song. And in most cars back then, it was interesting, you had a button that you could flip the tape over, that it would automatically flip the tape over. Well, if you flip the tape over, the last song on the album on side B was Africa. And you flip the tape over and then you could hear Africa right after Rosanna, if you wanted to. Uh, the other thing is, is that they didn't think that Africa was going to be a hit, and it turned out to be one of their biggest ones. So oh, I mean, so much, be- so much better than Rosanna. It's so much better. <laughs> I like them both. Uh, Rosanna kind of trades off the 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 lyrics, though the the singing, um, which I, I think is good. I think it's got a couple of good solos in it. Uh, but yeah, Rosanna was actually my introduction to Toto. And then I got into the really good stuff. And wow, Toto's amazing. They're a very underrated band too. Um, Rick Springfield with Don't Talk to Strangers is a good song. I, I think it's okay. I, I don't know if it's as strong as some of the other ones. I love Foreigner. Do you guys like Foreigner? Yeah, that's a song that I need to uh, sing for you all sometime on a matinee. It's Because uh, I, I actually love that song. I've been waiting for a girl like you. Oh yeah, that that one's one of my favorites by by Foreigner, by far. Uh, what I understand is that these ballads kind of broke up the band because you had members of the band that that were sick of them. So, but they made them a lot of money. <laughs> mm. uh, and then we mentioned you should hear how she talks about you. I think that's just a catchy song. I mean, every time I hear it, it's just like, oh wow. You know, it just reminds me of the 80s. We have the uh, minion of the bodiless necromancer himself, Skull of Calderon's minion. Hello and hail to you. Hail Agent Skull Pepsi of One is giving Matt G a stern lesson in uh, musical tastes. Excellent, <laughs> excellent. So, love Jenny8675309. I got a Hall and Oates story for you guys real quick, and it's the latest on them. Uh, did you know they just recently broke up? <laughs> they recently broke up. Oh yes, like God, how yeah. recent? So, like within the last few days, they've been in lawsuits against each other. And uh, so, my understanding of what's happening is 
there's a disagreement about selling their catalog. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Apparently exactly. uh, Daryl Hall does not want to sell it. And John Oates wants to sell a portion of it so he can have more money. I don't know all the specifics about it. Agent Pepsi one, do you know more about it? Do you want to talk about it? Well, I mean, I know they've been, they've been fighting now for years about this. They haven't been on, on speaking terms other than, now I do understand they've been playing on the casino circuit mm -hmm. in the past couple of years, but they stopped that maybe a year ago and they were just basically playing on stage, but they weren't speaking to each other. And that went downhill from there. It's, I, I, like I said, they're not my one of my favorite bands. And I get, I get them confused. It's the short one. Because, you know, one is like, like a foot taller than the other. Mm -hmm. It's the short one that didn't write very many songs. And he wants, he wants basically a giant cut of all the songwriting. And the other guy said, no, I mean, look, I wrote all these songs. This is my oh. work. I want... I want, you know, I want what's due to me. And I think that's fair. But, you know, I mean, these gentlemen are now in their mid-70s. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's time at their age. You know, I'm sorry. I mean, you know, I mean, I, I'm looking forward to my, my birthday on Wednesday. But, you know, we're all getting older. And, I mean, Jesus. I mean, it's time at, at their age to say, look, we don't have a lot of time left. And just bury the hatchet. And, you know. I mean, it's the energy they they spend doing these stupid things. Mm -hmm. I mean, they were together like 30 something years, 40 years, and now they're maybe even 50 years. I'm not sure, but you know, now they're just at each other's throat. It's just, you know, they should just agree to disagree and say, hey, we're done. We're not going to perform anymore. But look, we wrote this, this beautiful music, and even Tasha doesn't like it. That's okay. I mean, she doesn't have to like it, but. You know, you know they should celebrate. You know the you know the the evening of their life. You know they're 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 going into the twilight, and they should they should celebrate that and not with lawsuits. Yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. I actually saw them in concert uh, about eight years ago. Now eight years ago or so, uh, they were phenomenal. I I love them. Yeah. I I like Hollow Notes. I I love all their hits. Um, you know they they just they had so many. They had like twenty eight top forty hits in the eighties alone, it's just a phenomenal band. And you make my dreams is my favorite song by them. And it, it came out late 81, early 1982. Didn't quite make this top 40, uh, Taylor Swift, greater than Disney, star Wars and MCU. I wish we would cover thriller, but a lot of the thriller hits were released in 1983, even though the album came out in 1982, it didn't start to chart until late 82, early 1983. I did a whole, video on that album. If you guys want to check it out, I can link to it uh, later on or check it out on my, uh, my page. Thriller is just a fantastic album. One of the greatest albums ever made. And Michael Jackson was amazing in the eighties. He, he owned the early eighties. I mean, my I mean goodness, so many I hits, mean, you know, that, you know, be that as it may, but you know, the funny thing is Thriller is the only one of his albums I actually like. Really? Stuff that, the stuff that came before, I think, was kind of cringe. And the one that came after, directly after, bad. Mm -hmm. It's just that it is bad and not in a good sense. I don't know. I liked Man in the Mirror. I thought that was a good really? one. Really? Okay. Yeah, I like Man in the Mirror. Um, some of his, his early stuff right before Thriller was a bit too disco. Yeah, I can understand that. But I thought he had some good hits. Uh, there are some good songs off of Bad, but I, I can see kind of where you're coming from on there. But Disco Stu disagrees with you. With you. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Anything else about uh, these top 10? I know that Tainted, Tainted Love also will uh, segue oh God, into Where Did Our Love Go? which I think is really cool when you combine the two as a one hit wonder by soft cell. So, and then the chariots of fire theme is, is great. Uh, the movie actually won an Oscar over, over Raiders, which I disagree with. Cause I think Raiders is a much better movie. Uh, yeah. But 
uh, that movie is an interesting movie. It's kind of slow, but it's it's a based on a true story about uh, the British Olympic team in 1924, 100 years ago. So, all right, let's get to our top 10. Woohoo. Oh, there okay. you go. All right. In the top 10, we've got Hard to Say I'm Sorry by Chicago. Excellent. Abra, 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 Cadabra. Oh, I love that song. Steve Miller Band. And then, mm -hmm. and then Hurt So Good by John Cougar Mellencamp. Ooh, baby, you make it hurt so good. Sometimes love don't feel like it should <laughs> And then another John Cougar hit, Jack and Diane, which is probably one of his most famous songs. Mm -hmm. um, then if the Human League. Famous. Yep, the Human League at number six with Don't You Want Me, Baby. Don't, Don't you, you want me, me now. No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> then another great song by the Jay Giles Band, uh, Centerfold. Uh-huh. Yeah, Paul McCartney and Stevie Wonder make their appearance in this top 40 with Ebony and Ivory, which is a beautiful song. Yeah, but okay. It's yeah. it's still nowhere. It like like yeah. I get I get the ode to uh you know playing the piano. I mean piano. They're playing piano here, not piano. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh yeah. So, so it's not minute. one of the better ones, I think. I, I don't know that it belongs in the top 40. So, so wait a minute. This is, this is the top 10? Yeah, this is the top 10. Okay, that, can't, that can't be? Number that nine. cannot be? Where's Pat Benatar? Um, Love is a battlefield. Where is she? She's so that, not in there yet. That's, She's not in there. Next year. That one is yeah. next year, but yeah. you, had, you had, you know, so many good things. Um, yeah. Oh, my God. Yep. Number three is Joan Jen and the Black Hearts. I love rock and roll, which Beautiful. is a fantastic yeah. song. Very good. That's all else. Uh, then Survivor with their big hit, oh. "I the Tiger" from I Rocky love that Three. Song. Yes, <laughs> very easy song to parody and improv. Very, mm -hmm. very. Easy. Matter of fact, Weird Al has a parody of that song. Weird um, Al has a parody of three songs on this top ten. Yes, he does. And yeah, then, go ahead. No, I, I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm just, I'm just thinking to myself. It's just, it's so much stuff is missing. Yeah, there's so a lot I, missing. These are the Billboard I mean, hit singles. I understand, but if, if anybody thinks that you know Jack and Diane, is, you know, I mean, those are good songs. They're all good songs. Mm -hmm. But there's some that are just that stick out to me, like Twilight Zone, mm -hmm. and Golden Earring. Mm -hmm. That is mm -hmm. phenomenal. And, you know, somebody should tell Doomcock to do that one because it's 2 a.m. And, <laughs> you know, I mean, how about how about him from Ultravox? That has to be one of the most haunting rock and roll songs ever. Mm -hmm. um, we came to dance from the same quartet CD. Mm -hmm. I mean, all this stuff. Um, it's just sad. It just said that this was the top 40. Um, e Ebony and Ivory. Oh, my God. Yuck. It's <laughs> song, physical. You've got to be kidding me. Yeah, physical is number one. Now, physical is hard, number one. Hard to say I'm sorry. Now, that is an amazing song. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. I love yes. Chicago. I love Chicago. Chicago is my favorite. And then I think Chicago even carried on fairly well their next album without Peter Cetera. No, I mean, he's, mm -hmm. no, no, no. He he sang on he sang on Chicago Seventeen. Mm -hmm. He did. That he was did, in '84. But... Mm -hmm. And I think he left the band after that. But yeah, they still had some hits after he left the band, though. Yeah, but now Steve Miller band. I'm not a big Steve Miller fan, but Abracadabra is is the. I mean, for me, it's one of the defining songs of that year. Mm -hmm. The black panties with the angel's face. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, but I mean, I just don't understand how John Cougar Mellencamp can have 
two songs in the top ten and Olivia Newton John, the disco queen. <laughs> and Paul McCartney singing Oh Jesus, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. I mean you know, you gotta be kidding me. You have to be kidding me. Well, let me let me let you know. I mean, some of the longest running number one songs of uh, nineteen eighty two were "I Love Rock, Rock and Roll" mm -hmm. and "Ebony and Ivory," uh, which stayed at the top ten for seven weeks. Yeah, how, how even about six says you have to remember that the Billboard rating lists were heavily biased towards the big three record companies. Yeah, yeah, okay, that's I true. Mean... Yeah, that's true. And then "Physical" uh, by Olivia Newton John started at the end of. Um, 1981 and it was on the billboard uh top uh one our top 40 at number one for 10 weeks okay but still. hey how about um isn't that from 82 of uh, the eurythmics sweet dreams are made of these was that or was that 83 i think that was 83 yeah, it's 83 i remember have i had that cassette Though, as much as i love sweet dreams by eurythmics i still think here comes the rain again is Oh, that's a the beautiful song. Hey, and you know, there was Planet P Project with Why Me? That, mm -hmm. that might have been 83 as well. Mm -hmm. But 1982, outside of those three songs, uh, having long 10 years on number one, they had like the most number one songs on the Billboard through the year. Uh, at the time, 1982 had the second lowest number one song since 1956 with only 15 songs reaching the number one spot. Hmm. So interesting stuff. Very, very nice. Uh, but physical. Oh, no. yeah. Physical. Now that, now that song is stuck in my head. Thank you. <laughs> this Thank is you. typical. Typical. This is <laughs> typical. <laughs> physical. No, 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 no. Let me do this for Agent Pepsi One. Let's go for it, go for it. it a little bit. It says typical, typical. This is typical. Where are my favorite songs? Where are my favorite songs? This is typical, typical. Well, you know, all I can tell you that if, that if I'm going to make a mixtape of 1982 songs, um, <laughs> well, that one will not be on there. <laughs> Everything and Ivory will not be on there. Um, yeah, I mean, oh my god, okay. okay. See, I do like John Mellencamp, but I he hit the he hit it, he hit the top charts really hard with these songs, and I can't help but wonder how much MTV had to play in this. I mean. Physical was played all the time on MTV. Uh, all the John Cougar songs were played a bunch on MTV. I don't think Steve Miller released a video for Abracadabra. Oh, no, he did. he did. He did. He did? Oh, he did. Most certainly he did. I have that video. And oh, you so, do? I mean, I mean, just truth, you know, truth be told, I have maybe all of John Cougar CDs. These mm -hmm. are my collect. Mm -hmm. But... You know, I also do music videos. I collect music videos, and and he, the Steve Miller Band, released a wonderful video for Abracadabra. They did. Wow, I I don't remember seeing it. But you know, you know, you know what else is missing on here? This is definitely 1982. America's missing with "You Can Do Magic," which is a phenomenal song. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, is it "Border" or "On the Border"? It's "On the Border" from from the same album. It's also from 82. I mean, both of those also have wonderful videos. Mm -hmm. I mean, all this stuff is missing. Yeah, You Can Do Magic was actually number 65. What? It, it, oh, okay. Mary, are you okay? You've been quiet. Mary? I hope she's okay. She's been quiet. I haven't, I haven't heard her in a little bit. Uh, hang on. Okay, buddy? Yeah, I don't know what's wrong with my headphones. 
There we go. Now there we go. Well, it's not my headphones, so that's straight from my... I'm trying to get my headphones to work. Okay, it's just you were hey, quiet on, for a little bit. I don't know if you were talking into a mute mic or something. There we or... go. Yeah, I was talking into a mic that was like came unplugged. Oh, oh that'll do it. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was seeing you can do magic. <laughs> yeah, exactly. you can do anything that I mean, you look, if, if Mary agrees with that, that should be magic. Five. Oh, yeah. Well, if I look at the, the 100 that we got on here, and there's there's a list that I've got on about this. So a couple of songs. Uh, Arthur's Theme by Christopher Cross was way down at 98. That's a great uh -huh. song. Yeah, Working for the Weekend by Loverboy is at 97, and that's a great song. Uh, I love that song. working for the, for the weekend. weekend. There's this band called The Flirt. I believe mm -hmm. that was their name, and they had a song called Passion. Wasn't that you do as well? Never heard of it. I don't. I don't know. I. I, I don't see it on here. Um, yeah, my husband loves that one. I think he just likes to see the video with the, the three girls in little short skirts. But it might be. <laughs> kids in America by Kim Wilde is on. Uh, oh God, that's, that's the that kids in America. Van Halen was at 88. Oh, Pretty Woman. I thought their version of Pretty Woman is great. I love Taught for Teacher. Ah. Yeah, but that was yeah. from 84. Yeah, that was, it was a great album. Yeah. yeah. yeah but Panama, I, Panama was a, oh, you know what's, you know what's I'd on this? I'd oh, rather God. listen to David Lee Roth any day than um, Sammy Hagar. Sorry, but uh, that's just I don't my... know. I mean, I like Sammy Hagar myself. I like Hagar. I like Hagar. Uh, I like I'm not a Hagar fan. I Hagar like, is amazing. I'm a David Lee Roth fan. Whenever I'm... David Lee Roth started it, and he was freaking amazing. I like Whenever I'm recording yeah. death races, uh, I I, I uh, listen to Hagar. I can't drive 55. You know, oh, I uh, like that amazing. song. That's a good song. <laughs> hey, you yeah. know, you know, I'm not man. saying I hate Hagar. I'm saying that I prefer, um, I prefer David Lee Roth over Sammy Hagar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, so. if you want to listen to real Hagar? Listen to the 1979. Uh, album called Street Machine. That is amazing mm. from beginning to end. Listen to uh, the song Explosion. Or what is it? Explosion? Yeah. That's a really good song. Hey, yeah. Uh, where is Elton John? Didn't he come out with Too Low for Zero in 82? I thought he came out with that in 83. Could be 83. That could be 83. That's that Yeah, because right. the only Elton John on here I see is Empty Garden. But listen, here's what's left out of the top 40 that, that I'm looking at. Uh, every th little thing she does is magic. By the oh, police. beautiful. Yeah. That should be a top 40 hit. Yeah. I mean, yeah. That's yeah. Great. That's for sure. Um, Gloria. Do you remember that song? Oh Call Gloria. Gloria. Yes. From, uh, Gloria. And... We talked about Journey earlier. Why is Don't Stop Believing at number oh. 73? Um, oh, what my goodness. Beautiful, beautiful song. Yeah, that should be top 10. Um, Love Will Turn You Around is a crossover hit from Kenny Rogers. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. The Gambler was the Gambler mm -hmm. from 82 as well. Yep. Somebody's Baby by Jackson Brown, who's a very underrated artist. He's fantastic. You guys yes. know that? He is. You know he's from Germany. Yes, I think he was born there, right? Mm -hmm, he was. You know who else was born in Germany that's a famous celebrity? Um, the lady that played uh, on Deep Space Nine. No, no, it was not Deep Space Nine. It was it was Voyager. The, the played the the uh, the Borg. What's her oh, name? Jerry seven Rudd. of nine. Yeah, Jerry seven Rudd. of nine. Yeah, seven of nine. Bruce Willis was born in, born in Germany as well. Really? I did not know that. Yep. Yep, he was. Yep. But Somebody's Baby uh, is featured in Fast Times at Ridgemont High. Oh, yeah. That's true. I mean, that's true. Then another one that should be 
I, I mean, this one's got to be top 20. I don't know why it's at 67. And I ran, I ran so far away. Couldn't get away. Flock of seagulls. Love Beautiful. that one. Uh, you can do Magic by America at 65. America is one of my favorite bands of all time. They are just amazing. I oh, have to yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Robert Wright, you're getting me tempted to uh, the next matinee I do, I just sing a bunch of these hits, these 80s songs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I uh, usually croon and, and sing a country song here and there and a metal song here and there, but you got you got me getting tempted um, to just do an 80s you block. Know, you, know, you know, Tony, if you really want to if you really want to do a metal song, a metal imitation, have Doomcock to Ring of Fire by... Um, Oh, God, what was that guy's name? Johnny Cash. Johnny, Johnny Cash. Cash. He did. Yeah. He did it. This is years ago. This must have been five years ago now. I was on a live stream with him, and he did a version of this, but with like a metal twinge to it. Ooh. It was the most amazing thing. Yeah. And I've been trying to get him to do this since, and he won't. He won't do Emperor Palpatine doing a Hell 9000 impression. He won't do any of that, but... I'm going to show up at his door one day and I'm going to bang on it. I'm going to do this for me or else. Good you, day. If I can't Very get good. it done, girl, you, you're you never going to be able to. But I think, when I think of the HAL 9000 bit with Palpatine, I could just see Dave there and he's just like, Very good, Dave. Very good. I love Hell 9000. <laughs> he does great ones on that. So great. <laughs> That's that's a wonderful bit that he does. Yeah, I know. Wonderful bit. Open the pod bay doors. <laughs> yes. The transcript <laughs> readings that I do, uh, I do the oh flying car bit from Quirks as different characters. I do yeah. the uh, Doc and Marty doing the flying car bits. Uh, a fan where did that? Also. Where does that come from again? What's that bit come from? What the flying car? No, the or, or, or open, open the pod. Yeah, that's from 2001: A Space Odyssey. Mm -hmm. That's what I thought. I have no, I know I've seen it like, um, probably like a million times somewhere, but I couldn't remember what the name of the movie was. My favorite one, my favorite yeah. one that he does, uh, it, it's just it's a it's one line off of it that's really really hilarious. He's just like, it, I think it's with uh, I can't remember which one it was, but he has Dave go. What are you talking? Hal, I'm an astronaut, and every time he says, uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> "Which one was that?" Oh <laughs> oh, um, Y'all remember that he did one where it was God? What was that? C, not C three PO, but C three. You know, you know the, you know the mean one. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah, nine thousand impressions. C three MFO. <laughs> Rolling that I, I tried to download this portion, I couldn't do it, but it was amazing. That's awesome! Yeah, so real quick, a few more songs in the 80s that weren't in the top 40. Um, Our Lips Are Sealed by the Go Go's, oh, which yes, I think is a phenomenal yes, exactly. song. Um, another one is I Think I'm in Love by Eddie Money. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you hey, yeah. that one. Not, not, to, not to interrupt, oh. Rob, but yeah. Yeah, I was just thinking, you know, you know, um, the theme from Arthur, that's 1981, yes. though. That's 1981 because the movie's from 81. I have the movie mm -hmm. on DVD. So yes. It, it might have been very late 81. I don't know. Yeah, it was late 81, so it crossed over in 82. I checked on that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Wasted on the Way by Crosby, Seals, and Nash. Uh-huh. Uh. Love in the First Degree was a crossover hit for Alabama. Yeah. Caught Up in You by 38 Special. Do you that guys know that one? Uh-huh. Yes, I do. 53, uh, that should be way higher. I love that song. Special. Yep. I mentioned Cool Night, but this song should be uh, much higher as well. He we in the news with their first hit, Do You Believe in Love? Do oh you my God, that was believe in love? Yeah, that was their first album, first hit. I did not know that. I 
Huey Lewis has so many good ones, though. You know, yes, he does. I think I think my personal favorite still has to be "It's Hip to Be Square." I know everybody will say, "Oh, Power of Love, Heart of Rock and Roll." No, it's "Hip to Be Square." Heart of Rock and Roll is beautiful, though. Yeah. Oh, hey. get your guitar out. Oh, no, don't make me get out the piano. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, my arm is like still throbbing from that piano block. That I, I know. My God, man. That's the first time that I've done a set like that on the keys hey, um, in a long time. You know, I'm surprised, I'm surprised Judas Priest wasn't on there. Uh, yeah, I don't see it. See Jesus Priest on there, but you know, I mean, Painkiller, Painkiller was from '82. I'm, I'm almost 100 percent sure. Yeah, you could have had some that were in the pop or hard rock top 40, but didn't hit the Billboard one. Uh, a couple others, real quick. Young Turks by Rod Stewart. Do you guys know that one? Yeah. Yes. Of course. Not, not one of my favorites, but yeah. I thought Private Eyes by Hollow Notes is a much better song than I Can't Go For That, No Can Do. Yeah. Man, yeah. from Hollow Notes. That was 82. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then Pac-Man Fever is a cheesy song, but I don't know why it's at 42. It should be way down the list. Yeah, yeah I was like, about to say. Like yeah. yeah. The arcades, man. The arcades. It was just part of that, that 80s culture, going to the arcade and dunking quarters in. Yep. You got that Pac-Man fever. That was a real thing. Yes, it was. It was crazy. Yeah. I remember were... playing Mrs. Pac-Man on a top down at Pizza Hut. That was real fun. <laughs> Pizza Hut, for real? Pizza the Hut. Wow. So... Very anyway, that's 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 some of the hits that weren't uh, there in 1982. Anything else about this year that we want to talk about in music? Well, I mean, oh. I mean, for me, you know, that era from 82 to like 84, maybe even late 81 to like mid 1984, late 84. That was, you know, that was the second British invasion. Mm -hmm. And that era, I mean, it spawned so much great music. Mm -hmm. And interestingly enough, interesting enough, there was an era in front before that, in '78 and '79, where you had stuff like "Video Killed the Radio Star," you had "Time Passages" from Al Stewart, you had all these great songs, and I think that led up to it. But 1980 was kind of blah, mm -hmm. and then of course '81, you had that explosion of music. What yeah, I think, I think you had. Uh, Disco and punk was kind of fading, and then you had the explosion, the second British invasion, right? That you're speaking okay. of. Punk still had so, a scene. Sex Pistols still had a scene. So they did. Yeah, they sort of fade off in the eighties. So. We're talking about 1982, correct? Yes. So okay, how about I have the Tiger, mm -hmm. ja Jack Jim. and Diane from John Cougar Mellencamp. Mm -hmm. uh, how about we did Heat of the Moment, didn't we? Mm -hmm. Yes. All those, all those were in there. Yep. I, I, I in the Sky by the Alan Parsons Project. Mm -hmm. Um. Let's see. Did we do Centerfold? Yes. Okay. Yeah, but I think Free Stram is a better song than Centerfold, though, in my opinion, by Jay. Yeah, Hill. it is. And then Hurt So Good from John Cougar Mellencamp. Is, mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I'd, so like to, I'd like to add one more thing. Sure. It just came to mind. I think this, you know, that first era that led up to the second invasion, I mm -hmm. think I think Alan Parsons actually set that off in 1977. In late 77 was Eve. And the mm -hmm. song that set it off was Lucifer. Mm -hmm. And you know, that, that instrumental. And oh, yes. That, and I think that song really set it off. And something that I've noticed that was completely missing out of that was Manfred Mann's Earth Band. Mm -hmm. They had a, um, was it 78, 79? They had, it's called Angel Station. Mm -hmm. And that introduced basically that's the same 
type of songs, the same the same rhythmic beats that characterize the you know the second British invasion, especially the early part. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, you know, stuff like like um, Spirits of the Night. Um, you had oh my God, I can't remember. I can't remember everything that's on there, but Angel Station's on there. Don't Kill It, Carol. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that basically introduced all of that. And if you think about it, that music and what you had in the early 80s was very similar. Yes. Yeah. You mentioned Alan Parsons. I do like Eye in the Sky, but it's not my favorite Alan Parsons uh, no, song. No, not even yeah. close. My no, favorite no. is Don't Answer Me. Yeah, yes, yeah. Man. My my favorite is, is that Eve album. I love it. I absolutely mm-hmm. adore listening to it. In fact, I was jamming out on it this morning. So mm-hmm. I just I don't know. <clears throat> I'm I think, trying to think of my favorite 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 ones, but I don't know. It's really hard to choose. <laughs> Yes, I think this period of music is where some of your classic rock bands from the 70s started to to fade out. Uh, it's one of the last years of uh, Fleetwood Mac in the top charts. Right. Yeah, exactly. you know, they, they also think Crosby, Stills, and Nash, this is one of their last albums as well. Yeah. You, you know, you know what Fleetwood Mac, they had in 87, 88, they had their last hurrah. That was with, with the album Big Love. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. But I mean, it wasn't the same. They had this that '70s sound, and, and I don't know. I mean, I don't think it went over too well. No, I don't think so. But late uh, 1982, you had some interesting hits that, that didn't make the chart because they came out in December. But "Mickey" by Tony Basil was oh, huge back then. You hear that everywhere, and then you, the video was played all the time. Hey, you, you know Tony Basil. You know, if you see that video, you know where she's a cheerleader for that. Do you know how old she was doing that? She was in her 30s, wasn't she? She was like 41. Really? Wow. I mean, she, she was like 41 when she did that, and that's amazing. I mean, and I hate to say it, I'll be 40 in, in, on Wednesday. And you don't I, look I, a day over 29, Agent Pepsi One. <laughs> I've been holding. I've been, I've been 29 and holding for decades uh, now. Uh, okay. Oh, uh, <laughs> Listen, secret to immortality. I, I need to know I, where it's at. Yeah. <laughs> I've been trying to hold it at 39, girl. Oh like, what, what, um, oh my God. What planet are you on? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, Doc. You don't look a day over 50. <laughs> Well, that's yeah. because I had myself an organ transplant, skin care, and a new spleen and colon. That's what do you think? Right. <laughs> but yeah, it, that's it's interesting. Um... Yeah. A couple other hits in, in the end of uh, 1982 that didn't quite even make the list. Man Eater by Hall and Oates is probably one exactly. of the best songs. Mm-hmm. Um, a song that I don't think if you guys know the artist, but I love this song. Stepping Out by Joe Jackson. Oh, absolutely. I absolutely adore that song. Yeah, it's amazing. That's a song. The keyboard on that song is phenomenal. The da, 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 da. Don't tempt me. Don't tempt me, Master Jedi. I will do it. I'm sure you can play it. Star. <laughs> and then another great one, because this, this band came and went too quickly. Stray Cats with Rock This Town. Um, yeah, I you know I ne- I was never a fan of them, and then the the lead singer from Stray Cats had like a big band orchestra for a while. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes, they sure I was, did. I was never I was never a fan. And I got um, it. it's that rockabilly sound I just don't like. I I like that rockabilly sound. I do too. I, um, Very fifty. And I like um I like some of the uh, songs like. These days, for instance, like the Black Keys that are very, very um, bluesy. And I love that sound, you know. No mess with my duck tails. Yeah. So when I was in college in the 90s, uh, not only was I DJ on the radio, which was a lot of fun, but also swing was starting to come back in the style. Yeah. Oh, I remember that. (laughs) 
And that's when Brian Setzer's orchestra was very popular. Right. And, and squirrel, nut squirrel, mm -hmm. nut zippers, squirrel nut zippers, right? Squirrel nut zippers, right? Yeah. And yep. voodoo daddy. Yes. And voodoo, voodoo, and voodoo daddy. I had all three of those. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, um, I don't know yep. if you know this or not, but if you go, there are some great cover bands now that actually, you know, record this music, but they're not American. There is a Daria, it's Daria something or another, Zara Zanova. She's from Ukraine. She's on YouTube. She has a, she does heavy metal covers. Really? It is beyond this. I mean, this woman is beyond, she can do, the, she can sing soft ballad. She can sing screaming metal. She has everything in between. That's how Ren is. And there's this lady from, there's this lady from, uh, I, I want to say she's from Nor she's Norwegian, um, Minerva, Menevia, something like that. And Minerva. Very, yes, yes, exactly. Minerva. Yeah. And there's and there is a band of opera singers mm -hmm. who do heavy metal on the side. And really? They, cool. And can, excuse me, my allergy, they're just killing me today. But is um, it thank you. <laughs> but they do I I'm I can't remember their name, but they do a cover of the Bonnie Tyler song. Totally the Clips of the Heart. Totally Clips yeah. of the Heart, but they do like yeah. a metal version. But I mean, these are trained opera singers. Wow, that that's cool. This. Yeah. And they have a video out that is that is like beyond amazing. I'll have to check that out. Um, you know, Rob, if you want some of the, if you want some of the, I'll send you some links if you want if you want to see some of those. Sure. Yeah. Please do. Uh, Kevin Six in the uh, chat says 1982 marked the last year of the traditional radio billboard rating system. After 82, MTV heavily starts to influence the rating lists. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I would say so. MTV ruled the the roost in the 80s. Yeah. Oh, like I much mean, to on. the chagrin of, of the radio demon, television started to kill the radio star. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. You know, there was Putting Out Fire from, from David Bowie. He did two versions of it. Really? Yeah, he did one that was in that movie, Cat People. Mm -hmm. And that one didn't catch on, but he did one on the Let's, on the Let's Dance CD, mm -hmm. which is a bit different. Yeah. Hey, one other thing about 82 that uh, I'm pulling up on here as well, that there were a couple of movies that had soundtracks with uh, some hit songs to them. So late in 82 is Up Where We Belong by Joe Cocker and Jennifer Warrens for oh my God, an yes. Officer and a Gentleman, which is a great song. And this song actually wasn't on the movie, but it was about the movie, Neil Diamond's Heartlight. You know a movie that's Turn about? on your heartlight. Yes, about E.T. Yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was 82, okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. It came out in October of 82, late, late October of 82. Okay. So, but yeah, I mean, it's just amazing how many uh, different ones are on there. Really, the 80s was the birth of the soundtrack albums as well. Yeah, it was. Survivor's Eye of the Tiger really helped set that off as well. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. You need to look no further Stan... than Stan Bush for soundtrack art. But, yeah, because then that's when... Uh, soundtrack stuff started really coming out is mm -hmm. um when i i have the tiger came out so you know, it's saint elmo's fire for example and saint elmo's yeah. fire yes but absolutely 485 though i, I do believe mm -hmm. yes yeah. then you also had you know kenny loggins had a, a ton of those he was king of the soundtrack album yeah you, you also had yeah that he also had that, L, that that movie, what was it called? Something about the Beaver Brown Band. I can't remember. Eddie and the Cruisers. Yes, Eddie and the Cruisers. Wasn't that 82? Yes. I don't know if that came in 82 or 83, but I love that movie. Uh, uh. Yeah, I mean, and, you know, and... I mean, on the Rick Dark Side. Yeah, on the and Dark Side. Was... You know, Rick Springfield had, a, had an album, Living in Oz, mm -hmm. which is superb. Mm -hmm. What um, was the... Sorry, eighty two, maybe eighty three. Well, Rick Springfield was on the list with "Don't Talk, Don't Talk to Strangers." Yeah, that's a, that's the one that that's off his previous album. Mm -hmm. So it might have well, been eighty three. It might have been eighty three. Mm -hmm. 
What was the one uh, with Kenny Rogers and he and he was talking about uh, and he did a movie and it was about like ho holding holding the cards. Oh, the gambler. Oh, that's the gambler. The gambler, yes. That, I, and, I I have a parody song of that called the Griller. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love the gambler. I love that song. That's a great song. Yeah, Kenny Rogers switched over to pop in the late yeah. 70s, early eighties, mm -hmm. and so he had a couple of crossover hits with that. Yeah, you had that several pro uh, country artists had with crossover hits. Alabama did it uh, with a couple of their songs. Uh, there are a couple others. Willie Nelson, of course, that we mentioned. Yeah. And uh, uh, what's her face that Matt G loves? She was country music first. Taylor Swift. Yeah, Taylor Swift. She I was country. <laughs> I I I dislike her very much. <laughs> I dislike her very much. It's my way of saying I I don't hate anybody in the world. I don't have any room in my heart for hate. So I say I dislike her very much because um, that means, yes, I don't like her at all. <laughs> at all. <laughs> yeah, you, you, know, she sing, you know, she sings nothing about her. She only sings about her poor choices in men. Yeah. I mean, yeah, she does. Pretty much. I mean, nothing all it is. poor choices in men. You're going... How can you be so incredibly stupid to make the same mistake over and over, over and over and over and over? And over, and over. <laughs> How many times? Swift or yeah, that's Taylor Swift. Yeah, she yeah. does. Yeah, okay, I'm sitting I mean, there and boo hoo about it on on um, you know an interview, and, yeah, exactly. and I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, are you joking me? Yeah, you know, and, and, and then and then she claims to be so so eco friendly. But she flies from Tokyo Her on a private jet. jet. Yes. To the Super Bowl. I mean, you know, I don't mean to talk about hypocritical. But if you like her music, you know, I understand. She has a big yeah. following. I Matt, mean, I am Matt, I lost why, but. Matt has every reason to love her. He can love her if he wants. But I just said to Matt, oh, you I wish know. I change his name, though, to something <laughs> A little less long. <laughs> like Matt G. Please, Matt, change it to something not so long so I can not have to type out a big old long thing. Thank you. So another uh, band in the 80s that I don't know if you guys know about. They're an Australian band. Uh, they came over as well. Little River Band. Oh, Do you guys yeah, know? Little River Band. Yeah. Oh, they're Australian. I did not know that. I, yeah, they uh, they're not. They're, they're part of that Australian invasion, you see. I didn't yeah. know that at all. Yeah, no, no. yeah they're yeah. from Melbourne, uh, but yeah, I, I, they did have one hit in the top, uh, top one hundred. Take it easy on me, but they had so many hits that you guys don't know. I mean, everybody knows "Lonesome Loser," mm -hmm. which was yeah. probably the biggest hit. Uh, yeah. But I personally like. There's a, a song called "Cool Change" by them, which is just phenomenal. Uh, they they were they were an amazing band and they they were late seventies early eighties and I think they peaked in in eighty two and that was the last of them and then they really didn't have any hits after that but they had a lot of great songs. Yeah, it's like um, it's like you know it's like thirty eight special. You know they mm -hmm. you know after their two or four CD I think that was eighty four. Mm -hmm. I mean, you really heard nothing from them anymore. But if you want to see them, they're still touring today. They're on the casino circuit. Yeah, but not all the original members of 38 Special. And did you know about 38 Special? A lot of the members from Leonard Skinner joined that mm -hmm. band. Yep. I, crash. I did oh, not know that. Skinner. That I didn't yep. know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I think... Skinner was never one of my favorites. Oh, I love Leonard Skinner. Oh, I love Skinner. Oh, Leonard Skinner, please. I'm going to turn on my hands and knees. Leonard Skinner, please. Yes. I got in it. Simple manner, call me the breeze. And um, I also like uh, The Devil Went Down to Georgia. 
Oh, yeah. So, 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 yeah. 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 No, I need, I need, I need to do, I need to do a parody of that one with. Uh, you do. Uh, you keep saying that one, and saying that, and I was like, "What well, is Tony gonna do?" But I, 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 I'm a candy player. I'm not a fiddler. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know it's gonna be hard. You can I ain't get gonna your... be playing no fiddle now. Just yeah, but can't you get your keyboard to do like a fiddle sound? <laughs> you know, uh, it is. It is. It's an older Casio. It's a Casio uh, okay. fifteen hundred. But I, I, you know, there's all of the input yeah. programs nowadays. You could make it do anything. You can make uh, anything sound like anything in this day I and will. age. I mean, that's why all these kids are able to, you know, release these hits without having a lick of actual talent. You know. Sound like anything I mean, exactly. well some of it's that the uh, studios too they're trying to get yeah. people that can just sing a little bit and then they surround yeah. the technology to change it and it's it's really sad because my qualifications as an artist is I, I really want to hear somebody who not only knows how to sing but also play an instrument and write and actually exactly good <clears throat> that's why ryan is your best bet mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to you, listen know, to you know, you know what John yes. Miller from Deep Purple said about exactly what you're talking about, Rob. He said that he was. This is before he passed. You know, he he's been dead now probably 10, 12 years. Mm -hmm. But before he passed, he had an interview, and he said that I'm trying to remember his exact words. It's something about that if real artists wear their own clothes, mm -hmm. and that's what he was referring yeah. to is that they actually play the instruments. They don't use all these these manipulated backing tracks they do the the real thing mm -hmm. and you know that's what he's you know referring to and you know 100 percent, i agree with him yeah some of the concerts that i've been to the most recent one right before the pandemic were i, yeah. I saw billy joel live and he was phenomenal i saw phil collins even though he was really confined to a chair because of his hip right. he could still sing and he sang every song and he was beautiful but I also saw Jeff Lynn's ELO. And I don't know if you were familiar with ELO and Jeff Lynn. But Jeff, Jeff Lynn sang all the songs. He wrote all the music. He can play multiple there's, instruments. He can write songs. He yeah. produced it. I mean, he's phenomenal. And his concert was just amazing with just what he can do. Yeah. Right. And not to be confused, a lot of these kids don't know the difference between a vocoder and an auto tune app. Mm -hmm. and uh with elo like uh they, they used vocoders and you know mm -hmm. they, they, yeah yeah you know that's that's told that's okay like you know to have some electric very you know minor electrical manipulations of your voice to create a, an ambient aesthetic to come through your ears is 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 a good thing but you know when you're literally roboting as you sing along you sound like you know speak and spell that that's <laughs> I'm just saying. Okay. It's just, there's a difference. It's a big difference. I love uh, ELO. Uh, I, that's some of the I love ELO songs too. To sing, uh, stepping out. I'm stepping out by ELO. Uh, I want to be a Wild West hero. Oh yeah, that's a great song. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> yes. I like yes. ELO as well, a lot. Um. A guy that um, I watch do reaction videos, um, he's called Black Pegasus. And um, he did, he had never heard The Devil Went Down to Georgia, not ever. And then he, wow. he was looking through his, um, uh, what requests people were asking for. And he just said it out loud, like, um, huh, the devil went down to Georgia. And his wife is from Georgia, from the sticks in Georgia. And she was like, oh, my God, I love that song. And he was like, I don't even know. I've never <laughs> heard this song before. Like, I, I've never heard it. So <clears throat> he did a reaction video on it. And my gosh, he was like, this man can spit rhymes. This is what I call raps, people. 
this is rapping. He's having a battle rap with <laughs> his fiddle with the devil. And they wrote a song <laughs> about it. And they wrote a song about this. <laughs> and he was just like, oh my gosh. He was like blown away, you know, just blown away. And when the and when the devil had lost, he laid, he like put put his hands out, like laying it at his feet, you know, laying the fiddle at his feet. Um and he even gives him like a little, you know, uh you know, come back and I'll battle you at any time because I'm the best there's ever been, mm -hmm. you know? And um, he was just like blown away from this song. And he was like, I, I just loved his reaction <laughs> because it was just so great. He was I like, and they, he's rapping people. That's what I call raps. It's, <laughs> he goes, it's lyrical. It's um, and rap stands for rhythm and poetry. So anytime that you have somebody doing rhythm and poetry together, um, it all came from doing those poetry slams back in um, the early 50s and, you know, stuff like that. That's where it came from. Interesting. And, yeah. And I just think it's so cool that now all these people are looking for um, new music that they want to listen to because they've just had it with, you know, um, like they're opening their minds because the older they get, the, um, you know, they want to hear new stuff. You know, they're sick of having the same old music constantly you know uh, always the same kind of music what you don't want to expand on your genres you know and i always like like to hear everything so um that's the reason why i want want to do something like this you know absolutely i yes. love rap music i think it's the bee's knees yo I do like rap, and I just recently discovered that I even liked it. I'm not a big rap person. I, I listened to some of it in the 80s and 90s, but it just got... No, it's not, not, it's not the rap that we have today. I'm not talking about that. We're using I'm all talking... the samples and stuff and, and yeah. today that I, I don't like. I was like, come on, create your own stuff. Right, right. I like people that can do their own, um, like make up their own rhymes and lyricism and um, know how to, to do those uh, double entendres and triple entendres where, where um, you know, throughout the um, sentences that they're speaking, it all rhymes together. And it all fits in a maybe maybe a four four maybe not in a four four you know mm -hmm. maybe they're doing it faster than a four four you know so I just think it's cool uh, the way that it sounds and you know rap is considered anything that has is rhyming um, and poetry so. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I didn't know that about rap. Yeah. So anything that has to do with rhyming and poetry and and um, is 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 set in like um, a musical, lyrical, you know, um, stage. And by entendres, I mean that um, if you take a sentence, um, you can take part of a sentence and rhyme it with the um rhyme the middle part with the middle part of the next sentence but rhyme the last part and the last part of the next sentence so that's a double entendre so that means that they he wrapped he uh rhymed the middle 
with the middle of the next sentence and the last part with the last part of the sentence so with the last part of the next sentence so that's a double entendre he read the card says one night in bangkok is listed as a rap yeah uh, yep. i didn't know that that's cool yeah it's anything that is it's anything that is has to do with um you know like rhyme and um rhyme and poetry it, that's all it is it's just poetry set to music so and um you know like i see it in bands like 21 pilots mm -hmm. where 21 pilots is doing um rap in they're they're considered kind of alternative kind of um kind of um a little bit of rap in there because the lead singer knows how to rap really fast and and um kind of you know like songs that are feel good songs like love songs and things like that and and they can do all of it and yes. that's the same thing with ren is like he can do all of it he knows how to do all of it and that's what sets him apart from everybody else is that they can do everything and not just one genre and that's what i like to look for cool. is that is people that know how to do everything plus play an actual instrument Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> they play an actual, actual instrument. Yes. Yes. And they write their up. own music mm -hmm. and do their own vocals without having it being cut and, um, you know, pieced all to hell, you know, because people that are actual artists don't have to have that done do you know that ren all he does is put a lapel mic on his on his um clothing and one inside of his guitar and every single um video that he's ever done is a one take just a one take that's interesting yeah he won't do it unless it's a one take very so, cool. Yeah. I'll have to check him out. Yeah. Well, anyway, that's that's basically the the, the hits of 1982. Uh, I'm gonna kind of wrap this, start to wrap this live stream up, but there you go. You, uh, I'm gonna let you guys talk about uh, what you got coming up. Tony, can you tell us uh, what you got coming up on your channel? Let's see here. Where to begin? Where do I begin? No, I'm kidding. Uh I have a uh, show uh, talking about Fallout that will be uh, tomorrow at 3 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Central. I do need to finish the last two episodes of Fallout. I gave it a fair shake, and it's it if it's like I said last night, it is irrevocably Fallout. If it was a standalone piece and not you know breaking canon in the games that it has been doing, it would get a higher rating. But it's still right now. A seven out of ten for me on seven point five in some episodes. Then I'm gonna have an episode of the Tower After Hours, and if I can't get uh, Gary and Andy on to share the couch, it's the first uh, pair of people on the uh, casting couch. I'm gonna have Mary uh, Ashmead here sitting on the couch uh, for that interview that night at 11 p.m. Eastern Standard. And you can always catch me doing a variety show of my own after Friday Night Frolics when the Lights go out in the castle. The lights turn on in the tower for all the late night guys out there. And uh, that's that's pretty much it. Um, living the dream, dreaming to live. Agent Pepsi One, what have you got coming up? Anything? Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, I've been kind of quiet on my channel. It's just this is the busy time of the year for me. Mm -hmm. So it's another six weeks. It was six weeks from yesterday. And I'm finally on summer vacation. I get rid of these damn teenagers. So I'm looking forward to that. And I should be doing more in the summer. Um, my husband and I are planning to go to Germany over the summer. 
Oh, so fantastic. Really, look, really looking forward to that. Hopefully, hopefully we get to do that. And yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm just trying to take it easy for a little bit. And state testing is here, so I'm super busy. But that's no all birthday I birthday live stream? Um, no, God, no. I'm, <laughs> I have been, I have been promised a very nice dinner. So that's where I will be on Wednesday. All right. And the Ginger Menace, what have you got coming up? Anything exciting? Yeah, I'm going to have Tony help me set up a reaction um, video. Um, and we're going to try a, a reaction video place where I can react to, to new uh, and upcoming music. And um, I really want to see what's coming up in the next, you know, few, um, few years or so. And, um, you know, I, I just got into a band called NF and, um, he's nothing but rap, but he, um, it's, it starts out dark at first because, um, his mother died of, um, of uh, a pill overdose and I've had that happen to friends. Nice. So like it really hit home for me. And um, so then um, now his new album is called Hope and he and he's wearing in all of his other um, uh, videos, he's wearing black and he's carrying it around a shopping cart that has black balloons attached to it. And that's his baggage. Hmm. Right. And so um, now he doesn't have the shopping cart. He doesn't have the black balloons and he's dressed in white. So, hmm. and he just had a newborn son. Oh, and wow. so it changed his whole perspective on life. And um, he said, mother, I forgive you, but I don't want my son to grow up um, wondering where his father is, you know? So um, I want to get into things like that where, where it's deep and um, emotional and, um, and it hits, it hits you in a way that you, um, are, you know, moved by it. So that's kind of what I'm looking for. And hopefully Tony can help me set up my channel and I'll get it started. We'll that's definitely do it. Uh, I'm, I'm busy tomorrow. I'm going to play cards with friends tonight. Well, what, are you, yeah. what are you doing next weekend? Because I'm going to be working i don't know i might be working that saturday too they're giving us overtime yeah, I, mean, I gotta jump on that we'll figure it out we'll figure out a date and time oh yeah for sure absolutely yeah. Sounds great it sounds like a very positive uplifting message that the guy has too for all he's been through yeah absolutely and that's the same with rand i don't know if you know he had um lyme disease for a uh, half of his life and they uh, he lives in uh, Wales and they did not, they misdiagnosed him. They, they just kept misdiagnosing him and it scrambled his brain. And he had, um, he had brain damage because of it. Mm. And so he had to go, um, he's in right now in, in Calgary in Canada and getting stem cell, um, you know, stem cell things, um, IVs every day because um, it really did a number on him. That's why a lot of his songs start off like um, there's one called Dear God. And that one really hit home with me because um, it talks about, you know, pain, your pain and um, you know, 
what is there something out there or is there not something out there you know any questions there? and which is it, what human beings do you know mm -hmm. and and so um he thought he was gonna die for most of his life you know and he has another chance at life and he's taking his chance and i just think that is fantastic and um he deserves it absolutely that's great well on my channel i've got a couple things coming up uh i've got the top 10 nintendo games my personal oh list. nice nes games uh and then of course i'm on pop culture breakdown this wednesday yep and i think i'm going to do a video about uh the billy joel album the stranger because uh, he just go. released a video for one of my favorite songs on that album vienna and i kind of want to do something that would support him on that so Oh, right. awesome. And you all know that I'll still always be on Doom Cox channel. You know where to find me. Absolutely. <laughs> Queen well, of the Wrenches. Yes, right. Queen of the Wrenches. So, yeah. but anyway, thank you so much, audience, for joining us. We hope you enjoyed this trip. Thank down you, everybody. Today. Thank you so much, uh, Tony, Agent Pepsi One, and the Ginger Menace for joining me. Thanks for being here, folks. Have a wonderful weekend, and we'll see you, you out the here. See ya. Thank you so much. Bye, Thanks, Rob. Love y'all. Appreciate it, sweetheart.